Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. The 13 robberies and two attempted robberies, which occurred in five of our seven precincts, spurred one of the largest criminal investigations in my 40-year career. This unprecedented number of robberies committed by the same individuals in a short period of time required an unprecedented response by the Suffolk County Police Department. The entire department was mobilized. Officers from commands throughout the department, including uniformed and plainclothes officers from multiple precincts, canine, emergency service, and aviation, as well as detectives from various precinct squads, special investigation section, narcotics, and the district attorney's office, to name a few, were involved. At times, there were as many as 100 officers involved in surveillances of as many as 20 locations and roving robbery prevention patrols. Special communication procedures were established for both surveillance as well as response to robberies occurring within the pattern area. Our pattern crimes unit, which I created as part of the introduction to intelligence-led policing, established that robberies would be committed by the same individuals. We were confident these criminals would be apprehended by the, due to our efforts and a pair were arrested without incident in the early hours of January 15th. The residents of Suffolk County should be proud of their police, the professional manner in which the investigation was conducted, and the speed in which the robbers were taken off the street. Thank you very much. Mr. Soder. Thank you. And, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I can tell you this, that I, too, uh, join with the Commissioner in congratulating the men and women, the over 100 men and women, uh, from the Suffolk County Police Department, the Patrol Division, the Detective Division, Aviation, K-9, all of whom participated in order to apprehend these two criminals, and w which essentially was a one-month crime spree involving 15 robberies or attempted robberies of locations which generally had were cash locations. What happened in this particular case, as we see it from a 12-page confession which was taken from each defendant uh, separately, was simply this. Uh, Ms. Greco uh, was released from the Suffolk County Jail uh, in the latter part of November of last year. The first thing that she did was she hooked up with her boyfriend, Mr. Marino, and the very first thing that they did was to go back and get heroin. They took the heroin, and they continued to take the heroin. Marina was working at a uh, body shop, Ant's Body Shop, which is located on Chesapeake Avenue in Medford. And he was able, at that time, to support their habit, which was only a bag, a bag and a half a day. They were doing pretty well for heroin addicts. And I'm certainly, by that, I don't mean to condone anything, anybody taking heroin. Nonetheless, what happened was around... Uh, the beginning of December, what had happened was their habit had increased from one to two bags to about six bags of heroin each per day. And simply, Marino, who was gainfully employed, could not continue uh, to generate the monies that were necessary to support both of their habits. Um, as a consequence, they resorted to committing robberies. This is a joint venture on both of their behalfs. They both participated in the planning and the execution of the robberies. In each instance, it was Marino who went into the stores. In each instance, uh, Ms. Greco participated to the extent that she was staking out the locations and she was driving the getaway car. Every single business, as I said before, was generally a cash business. What they were doing was uh, Marino was, had access to various cars that were in the body shop, <clears throat> and they were switching cars. They would use different cars on different occasions. They were switching plates from the various cars. On one occasion, they had a Mississippi license plate, and um, uh, to some extent, they were successful. What occurred to the police department, as Commissioner has related to me, is that he formed a pattern crimes unit, which is, is exactly w what it would imply. They, they developed uh, information not only from victims of the crimes, uh, surveillance photographs, and other in information that this was indeed
crimes that were being committed by one or two people, and there was a particular pattern to it, as a result of which they, the police department, and by the way, this is not one precinct, this was the crimes that were committed in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh precincts. And knowing the geographical area of the Suffolk County Police District, that's a lot of uh, geographical area, so that makes it even more difficult for them. Nonetheless, what the commissioner did, and the chief of detectives, chief of patrol, is they saturated target areas where they thought the, the robber or robbers might hit. Uh, undercover police officers took up positions in parking lots, and on one occasion, undercover police officers, I believe they were narcotics detectives, but uh, I know that they were uh, detectives in any event, they see a car which in their mind was very obviously casing a subway. Now remember, they knew a whole series of subway shops had be already been hit by the uh, robbers. The uh, police officers uh, t took down the license plate. The license plate came back to Mr. Marino, one of the few instances, luckily, that he used his own uh, license plate. Uh, using uh, license plate readers, they, lo uh, they located uh, the car and the fact that the defendants were uh, uh, apparently living. Certainly, Marino was working at the body shop that I just described. Ant's body shop was located on Chesapeake Avenue in Medford. And what happened after that is the uh, detectives uniform, they set up a 24-hour surveillance. They were following both of these individuals. Uh, they noticed that uh, they were going frequently to a location, 13 Tyne Avenue in um, Shirley, and they were per a, a known location where uh, heroin was being sold. It was obvious from the undercover narcotics detectives' experience that they were purchasing heroin at that time. They also noticed that for a period of time, there was a 10-day period of time where there were no robberies. And that kind of uh, was uh, baffling the police for, for, uh, uh, for the fact that things were occurring on a fairly routine basis. We found out, and again from the confessions, that uh, Marino was monitoring uh, media accounts. He had seen a surveillance photograph, and they both became concerned that uh, this was pretty hot, and maybe we better lay off. They also decided, and again from their statement, that they both wanted to get clean. This is about, this is after they did a Hess gas station robbery, had some heroin, I think it was December 15th. From December 15th to Christmas Day, they were legitimately, according to them, making an effort to get clean. And I'd like to just read to you, and this really tells it all, what people who are taking heroin, what this is all about. This is taken from one of the confessions of the defendants. After the robbery, the Hess gas station robbery that I just disclosed, which was on 112 in Medford, on December 15th, Jamie uh, wanted to get clean, and I tried to help her by not doing heroin. We were doing real good for a while, but on Christmas Day, 2013, I just couldn't take it anymore. I was getting sick, she was getting sick. I told Jamie I had to do a robbery to get heroin. We still tried not to do it, but by the end of Christmas Day, I took a, a VW Jetta, which was a customer's car at our shop, and they go on to say how they committed a robbery at the Sunoco gas station. And I think I, that kind of sums up what was really happening here and why these people were uh, committing their robberies. Ultimately, as I said before, working in conjunction with the, sub, uh, the uh, district attorney's office, there was a 24-hour uh, surveillance on the um, Ant Auto Body Shop. They were both living in the body shop itself. We were in the process of and waiting for certain forensic information to come back to us so we could prepare search warrants, be ready to make the arrest. Uh, unfortunately, um, there was an intervening factor which caused us to uh, make the arrest almost immediately as they walked out of their body shop. 
thankfully, again, because of the good work of the police officers, the detectives, we obtained from both of the individuals very, very detailed 12-page uh, confessions, or maybe one is 11 pages from one, 12 from the other, and um, we obtained search warrants based upon what they had told us. We recovered the gun, one of the guns that was used, the clothing that was worn by Mr. Marino, his sneakers. Uh, we also went to the location where they were purchasing heroin. A search warrant was executed at that location. Heroin was obtained. Uh, Oxycontin was obtained. A loaded weapon was obtained. And that seller uh, of the heroin was also arrested. One of the things that uh, the police thought was, and this is coming from ballistics experts, from what we could see from the video surveillance, is that the weapon that was being used, or the weapons that were being used, certainly fit the description of a 45 caliber automatic, which probably contains, I'm not a ballistics person, uh, probably eight, nine, ten rounds, I, I don't know if I'm right, but certainly it's in that area. That's what the police thought was being used. As it turned out, it was not a, uh, uh, it was a BB gun rather than uh, a uh, 45 caliber uh, weapon. They also thought, based upon the fact that they knew that these people were certainly committing these robberies, remember they were following, they had followed them on at least one occasion and knew that they were buying heroin, that they could be drug crazed. Um, Nonetheless, there was a successful a resolution of the matter. At this particular time, the uh, Suffolk County Grand Jury is um, considering uh, evidence uh, that's being presented to them with respect to charges relating to all of these robberies. I expect and hope that perhaps we'll have uh, the Grand Jury vote as to whether they will consider an indictment in a very short period of time.